What is up, YouTube and baseball card fans? Uh, I've put together a top 20 list. Um, it took me quite a while to put it together, but I'm excited to show you. It's the top 20 most undervalued baseball cards as of August 2017. So the criteria I have for this list are three things. Player accomplishments, which is pretty obvious. You know, what did this player do? How did he contribute to the league? Um, number two is the population report. So it's got to have a pretty low population report. You won't see any cards on this list um, from the junk wax era of the 90s and 80s. And number three is pretty important. The price for a collector and investment grade. So what do I mean by that? I consider a collector grade to be a, a card that will look good uh, no matter the decade. It will look presentable, you'll be happy with it, and it has a chance of increasing in value. And there's just a really solid example of that card from that decade. So I break it down from, if you're getting a card from 1930s, a collector grade would be a PSA 3, a 1940s card is a PSA 4, a 1950s card, a PSA 5, etc. And you get down to the 90s, which is a PSA 9. And in 2000s, you should have a card in a PSA 10. And I think you'll find this system works pretty well. You'll, you'll, you'll be very happy with the cards you, you pick up on these collector grades. And um, when you go below three, the 1930s, PSA 2 is a pretty good example. Like Tito 6s look great in PSA 2s. Um, you could probably bump it up to PSA 3. And then the 1800s, PSA 1. And an investment grade... What investment grade is, it's a, it's a card that will most likely um, increase in value and you, you have a pretty good return on investment. Um, the investment grade is higher than the collector grade because you're, you're, you're buying a nicer card. But these are, these are generally the, the hobby center for investment grade. And that is a PSA 5 for a pre-war card. So any, any card uh, before the 1950s, um, and then post-war is any card after the 1950s, and that's considered a PSA 7. So PSA 5 is an investment grade pre-war, PSA 7 is an investment grade post-war, and then post-war kind of ends around the 80s. Okay, but before we get into it, I have to mention these two cards. Um, the 1948 Bowman Stan Musial, this is his rookie card. He didn't quite make the list because um, his investment grade, PSA 7, runs for about $2,000. I'm trying to keep all these cards under $1,000 in investment grade. And most of them are well under that. Um, but his, his collector grade, the PSA 4, you can get for about 350 bucks, which is a steal in my opinion because Sam Musil is one of the greatest hitters of all time. He's part of the 3,000 hit club. He almost got 500 home runs. Uh, his batting average for his career was 331. He's number 10 on Sporting News' top 100 greatest ball, uh, baseball players. They made that list in 1999, but I think it's a still a pretty good list. And then he's number 8 on ESPN's top 100 list, which was done a couple years ago. So, still a great card to get in collector grade, but it's a little pricey in, in PSA 7. And then the other honorable mention I have on this list is a Tito 6 Tris Speaker. You can get a PSA 3 for about 450 bucks, which to me is a steal. Um, why he's not on this list officially is because his investment grade of a PSA 5 runs you about $1,300. Um, but this is still a card worth picking up in collector grade because he was basically a legend of his time. He, he batted 345. He's part of the 3000 hit club. He's the three times World Series champion. Um, He's an MLB record. He holds the MLB record for most doubles. But I think he's kind of forgotten about lately. And this, believe it or not, is one of the few rookies in the T206 set um, of a Hall, of, a Hall of Famer. So you can pick up a Hall of Fame rookie uh, and a PSA 3 for 450 bucks, which is a steal in my opinion. All right, so let's get into the list. Um, this is going to be the top 20 to 11. I will post the part two of the top 10 uh, a little later. So number 20, the 1975 Tops George Brett. So you can pick up a PSA 7 
Eclectic grade for about a hundred bucks or less, which is a steal considering that this card is one of the most iconic cards of the 70s. Um, I have a PSA 8 that I picked up. You can pick up a PSA 8 for about 250 bucks. Um, and George Betts considered one of the best third basemen of all time. He started a 3,000 hit club. He won an MVP in a World Series. Um, why he's so high on this list is because it's a pretty high population import. There's about 8,712 8, total cards. Um, but still a steal, I think, at $250 for a PSA 8. Next on this list is another iconic card, the 1967 Topps Reggie Jackson. Um, you can pick up a PSA 6 for, believe it or not, only about 200 bucks. And if you look at an investment grade, it's about 350 bucks, which is a steal in my opinion. Um, he's part of the 500 Home Run Club. I mean, everyone knows who Reggie Jackson is. He was he was a Mr. October. He was with the Yankees, five times World Series champion. Um, but there's there's a pretty high pop report on this. But if you look at the total pop for a PSA seven, that's relatively low at 1,179. I have a total of nearly 6,000 cards. All right, so number 18 on this list is a 1960 Topps William McCovey. Um, I think this guy's really kind of forgotten about a lot like Tris Speaker. Um, but, you know, he was a part of, he was, he's a member of the 500 home, home Run Club. He was an MVP, um, just a great player for the Giants. Um, and you can pick up a PSA 6 for only about 150 bucks, and a PSA 7, an investment grade, and 300 bucks. Um, to me, this, this is a steal of a card. Um, these are tough to find centered, and um, there's a lot of print marks on these cards. So the, the cards I'm showing in this keynote are all from PSA's website, so these are all like 8s to 10s. Uh, these are just examples of what these cards look like. But I would definitely pick this card up because I think it's it's undervalued and um, I think people will start to pay more attention to William McCovey's career. Number 17 on the list is a 1957 Topps Brooks Robinson. Um, Brooks Robinson was voted on the MLB All Century team. This is a list they did in, I think, 1999. Uh, the fans and some of the critics voted on it. I think there were two player, two or three players um, picked for each, each position, and he was one of the third basemen picked, and um, just a great player, 16 times gold glove winner, just a great defenseman, third baseman, and um, you can pick up a PSA 5 for about 300 bucks, and a PSA 7 for 700 bucks, which, you know, 700 bucks is a lot, so that's why he's number 17 on this list, and you know, he didn't break the top 15, but it's still a pretty low pop, you look at 645 and 2000. 800. Next on this list is a number 16, 1960 Topps Carl Yastrzemski. Um, he was a Red Sox legend, uh, 3,000 hit club, he's a triple crown winner, um, and 18 time All Star, 17 time or seven time Gold Glove winner. And you can pick up a PSA 6 for about 150 bucks and a PSA 7 for 325. So these cards go for a little bit more than William Covey, um, but it's still a steal in my opinion. The number 15 on this list, the only modern card on this list, is the 2000 Topps Chrome Traded Cabrera. This is the key rookie to get of Cabrera. He has the normal Topps and he has um, something else, but this is the this is the card to get because it's on a PSA registry. And I have a copy of this, it's the uh, Mint 9 version. And Miguel Cabrera is definitely going to go to the Hall of Fame. He's on his way to 3,000 hits and 500 home runs. And when he does, his card is going to go up in value when he hits those two marks of 3,000 hits and 500 home runs. And right now, you can pick up a PSA 9 for only about 70 bucks and a PSA 10's 330 bucks. And I've handled about three of these cards, and I can tell you it is tough to get PSA 10. Um, there's a lot of issues with this Chrome from that year and it has a pretty low pop of 524 and if you compare him to another player who's similar they came in the league around the same time Albert Pujols um, 
this is a much more affordable card, rookie card, key rookie card to get than than Pujols's. Pujols's is a 2001 SP Authentic, and that card goes for about $500 in PSA 9, and it's pushing $1,000 in the PSA 10. So this card is much, much more affordable, and Cabrera had, um, in my opinion, just as good a career as Albert Pujols. He was a Triple Crown winner. He's batting 319 for his career. Um, so a card I would definitely pick up now because it's, I think it's going to go up in value. That's a guarantee. Uh, next, number 14 on the list is the 1933 Gotti Roger Hornsby. Um, I picked number 88, 188. He has a fielding um, card, too, in the set, but this is the most popular one. He was also on the all-century team. He's considered one of the best hitters of all time. His career batting average was 358. He almost had 3,000 hits. He's a two-time Triple Crown winner. Um, number 50 on ESPN's Top 100 list. And you can pick up a PSA 3 for 200 bucks and a PSA 5 for 400 um, But the reason I don't have this card ranked to lower is because this is towards the end of his career. Um, he was a manager slash player. And I, I believe this picture of him is when he was managing. So it's an older card of Roger Hornsby, but still it's a classic card. It's from the um, one of the most collected sets, the 33 Gaudi, and it's still very affordable. Number 13 on the list is the 1967 Topps Rod Carew. This is a high number short print. If you look at the pops here, it's really low pops. And you can pick up a PSA 6 for 280 and a PSA 7 for 400, which to me is a steal considering how uh, low pop of a card this is. And he's a 3,000 hit club member, seven time, seven time gold glove, and an 18 time all star. And he, he won an MVP. Um, so this is definitely a undervalued card in my opinion. It's it's a tough card to get. Number twelve is another high number short print. The 1959 Topps Bob Gibson. He's part of the All Century team. Um, considered one of the best pitchers of all time, and you can pick up a PSA five for about three hundred fifty bucks, and a PSA seven is six hundred dollars. So in my opinion, it's still a steal of a card. This is the key card to get from the 59 top set and I think it's a beautiful card. I, I love the pink background. Some people don't but I think it's a great card. Then number 11 on this list, the last card until I post the top 10 is the Tito 6 Napoleon Lajaway. And uh, I picked the portrait because the portrait um, variation is the most collectible. He has two other cards where he's fielding and batting. And this is a copy I have. It's an SGC VG3. And you can get a PSA 3 for, believe it or not, only for $350 roughly. And a PSA 5 runs around 900 bucks, which is why this didn't crack the top 10. But this is a car that's over 100 years old. He's He was a legend of the dead ball era. He was the face of the league along with Honus Wagner and Ty Cobb. Um, he was a triple crown winner, part of the 3,000 hit club, and he batted 338 for his career. And this card to me, while not super cheap, is still very, very undervalued for a T206 card. And he definitely is a key card in the set. All right, so st stay tuned for the top 10 to number one. I will post that in a couple days. Thanks for watching.